Territory is a two to four player game for ages 13 and up with an average gameplay length of 30 to 60 minutes published by Territory. The basic overview of Territory has players compete with one another as one of five factions with built decks filled with champions, relics, and spells. But the twist is the playing field is divided by lanes. Each lane has a territory that will be upgraded and allow for stronger and or more champions to be played. Destroy your opponent's territory cards or any defending champion cards to gain star points and the first player to 18 points wins. To set up the game, lay out each player's map. Nearby have the status tokens, pile of D6 dice, and the large territory die. On the side of your player mat, place your territory deck, which should have at least five unique territory cards, and your main deck, which should be no less than 70 cards made up of champions, relics, and spell cards. We will be using sample decks for this video. Before you start, each player will roll a d6, and the higher roll goes first, or choose at random. Then place the d6 on the one on your turn track. Both players will choose one of their territory cards and place it face down in the middle territory location. And once both players have placed their territory cards, they will flip them face up. Then players will shuffle their main decks and draw 10 cards to create their starting hands. If desired, you could put any number of cards back in your deck and reshuffle and then draw back up to 10 cards. But this can only be done once. All territory cards have a white card back. On the top right of the card, you will see the territory's health and armor. The top left icon lets you know that it is a territory card. Moving down the card, you have the card's name and text that lets you know this territory's special ability. And at the bottom left of the card, you will see the amount of meat, food supply, for each level of the territory. And on the bottom right, is the number of points the card is worth if destroyed by your opponent. Each territory location has a max level of three and the territory will move up one level every turn. The amount of meat available will let you know which and how many champions can be played on a territory with a max of three total champions. The players will start their turn and go throughout each phase of play. The first phase has you do any of these in any order. You must draw a card, which has you draw a card from your main deck. The first player will skip this on their first turn. If at any point you have more than 12 cards in hand, you must immediately discard cards to have a maximum of 12 cards before taking any other actions. Next, you must gain two spell power tokens. Each eye counts as a single spell power, you can never have more than six spell power, and when collected, place it in your spell pool here on your mat. And again, the first player will skip this on their turn. The next must do is to move your territory card up one level. This will be done to every territory you have in play. Slide it up to the next line, making your territory able to support hungrier champions with your higher food supply amount. This will not be done on either player's first turn since the territory came out during this round. Also, if you have any relics in play that gain tokens, now would be the time they would gain them. Now we will move on to the first action phase, and these actions can be done in any order. Play or sacrifice any champions below your territories in play, as long as their total hunger does not exceed the territory's food supply. A champion card will have this symbol on the top left. On the right, like the territory card, they have health, armor, and food requirements. Your territory needs to have enough food to support all champions played underneath them. And you can never have more than three champions on a territory at a time. Moving down the champion card, you have the name and ability. Behind the ability, is the faction of that champion. The bottom left has their attack, movement, and range. And on the right, you have the number of points the champion is worth if destroyed by your opponent. 
When a champion first enters the game, they will be placed on this red dotted fatigue line and will be unable to move or attack on their first turn. If sacrificing a champion, simply place it in your discard pile. You can also play or sacrifice relics. Relics are played between territories here and will benefit both territories they are between. Relics have the relic symbol in the top left and health and armor in the top right. The text in the middle tells you the relic's ability and the bottom right are the points the opponent will gain by destroying it. Another action would be to play a spell. Spells require spell power. The amount of spell power is noted here on the bottom right of the spell card. Spell cards are identified by this symbol in the top left. However, there are three different types of spells. Pure spells, identified by this purple border. These spells have an immediate effect and are discarded after casted. Spell lore, which has an orange border, and they are spells that are attached to champions or territories and have lasting effects. And finally, you have hidden spells with this green border. These are placed face down on territories and activated by certain conditions. They are basically trap cards and are discarded after activating. And finally, during the first action phase, you can move any unfatigued champions from one territory to another based on the champion's movement. A territory needs to be in play for it to move there, and a territory needs to have enough food supply to support the champion that moves to it. Once the first action phase is complete, you can move on to the combat phase. Combat will not occur on your first turn, but let's go over how it would work on every other turn. Any non-fatigued champions will be able to attack the territory or relic across from it, but not the champions. The territories and relics that can be attacked are based on the champion's range. A range of zero means they can only attack the relic or territory immediately in front of them. A range of one allows the champion to be able to attack in adjacent territory and relic. And a range of two has full range on all territories and relic cards. If you wish to attack, move the champion up so it is on the green attack line. For each champion attacking, choose your target, the territory or the relic, and roll the attack die and add the results to the champion's attack power. Add together the total and if attacking the territory, the defender can decide whether to take the damage or use their champions on that location to defend it. If you decide to take the damage, subtract any armor from the total attack power and then reduce the health by whatever is remaining. To keep track of how much health a territory has left, if any, use the D6 dice you have set to the side. If you choose to defend, Choose a champion or champions to defend. A single champion must take the full damage before another champion can be used to defend. Just like the territory, any armor will reduce the damage. If the champion survives, mark its remaining health with a d6. If it is defeated, discard the champion and award the points to the attacking player. This can be tracked with dice or just by setting the destroyed card to the side. If there is any additional damage and no other defenders, or you choose not to use any more defenders, the damage will go to the territory. And if any armor would stop all remaining damage, the territory would still take a minimum of one damage, just from being hit. If attacking a relic, treat it like a territory and subtract armor from the total damage. However, for the defender, unless you have a champion with a relic defender ability, you cannot use a champion to defend the relic. Once all the champions the attacking player wished to attack have attacked, slide them down to the champion zone. The active player will have a second action phase that will allow them to do any of the actions from the first action phase, such as playing or sacrificing a champion, relic, or spell, or moving a champion to another territory. Then the end turn phase, which has all champions on the fatigue line move up to the champion zone to indicate they can attack and or move next turn, then pass to your opponent. Your opponent will go through the same five phases, the beginning phase, the first action phase, the combat phase, the second action phase, and the end phase. Play will continue like this until the third turn, where during the beginning phase, the players will choose a new territory to put into play. 
The first opponent will play this territory in the lowest position to their left, and the opponent will match them on their right. Play will continue, and on the fifth turn, the third territory will come into play on the other territory spot. By turn seven, all territories should be at their max level. If at any time a territory is destroyed, a new territory will be put into play immediately and will start at the same level of the destroyed territory. Throughout the game, you will encounter many abilities. The game comes with ability cards that describe each ability as well as list them in the rulebook. Some abilities will reference clans or tribes. These are identified on each card in its text area. Another thing to keep in mind is if you choose to sacrifice a card, it is placed in your discard pile and the points will not go to your opponent. Your opponent only gains points by destroying the cards while it is in play. Play until a player reaches 18 points and that player wins the game. This guide will get you started, so you can then build and discover the rest of territory from here. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified about new videos. If you're bored now, click this for more games.